Today we're going to talk about gushers and exploding bottles. Staff cut brewing for beer, brewing and event videos. It's a strange tradition amongst the judges. As I've never judged outside of the UK, I can't say whether this is just a British tradition or if it's something that extends across the world. There's generally two times you'll hear the beer judges cheer throughout the day. The one time is at the end of the day when we're reading out all the results. The other time is that unmistakable sound when you open a bottle of beer, hear it pop, followed by the big gush of beer as it sprays everywhere, all over the table, normally all over the lap of the judge, and everyone gives it a good cheer and happy days. And we all feel a little bit sorry for the judge who's about to taste that beer, because normally there's something not quite right. There's four main reasons for gushers and bottle bombs as they're commonly called demonetized um but yeah they are first one over priming if you put too much sugar in your beer at bottling or if the beer isn't fully finished before you bottle it's going to continue fermenting away in the sealed environment that is the bottle. Pressure is going to build up, build up, build up. It's going to get to the point where the beer is normally carbonated. But because there is still too much fermentable sugar left in the beer, it's going to keep going. It's going to keep going sometimes to the point where when you open it, it's like doing the old Mentos and Coke bottle challenge where you get a great big fountain of beer. If you're very unlucky, the bottle might just explode and you'll end up with bits of glass and beer all over whatever room you're keeping the beer bottles in. There's one thing you can do about this to try and make it a bit better. If you find that you've had a bottle like this, I suggest handling the rest of the bottles in the batch with great care. You might want to put them in the fridge and cool them right down before handling them anymore. And then you can just very slightly lift up the edge of the cap and release any excess pressure. Be very careful when you do this. You want to only just lift it enough to get that hiss of excess pressure out. Any more than that and the top will be gone and the beer will be out. That's about the only way to fix overprimed bottles, is let the excess pressure off. You may have to do this a couple of times before the bottles are safe to open. But the downside to this is if you do that to all the bottles, and we'll come on to reason two in a minute, which really impacts this. But if you do that, you could end up with flatter beer or beer that is flatter than you intended. The easy way to avoid this in future, make sure that your beer has properly finished before bottling. Don't just look for a steady gravity reading over a couple of days. Make sure it is in a decent range of your expected final gravity. If you expect your beer to finish around 1010 in specific gravity, that's one zero at 1.010, which is a normal sort of expected value. If you expect your beer to finish there and it's 1020 at the time you bottle it, there is still potentially another 10 points there that can be fermented out in the bottle. Make sure it is at the expected gravity or close to it within a handful of points and that it is steady. And then make sure how much sugar or priming fermentable you are using at bottling time. You want to make sure you're not putting too much in there. 
especially if your bee has finished a couple of points high, you need to allow for that. That will then make sure that you don't have overprimed beer going into the bottle. Next up is kind of similar to overprimed, but it only affects some of them, and that's uneven priming. When you take in a spoonful of sugar, pouring it into each bottle, you are going to get an uneven amount of sugar in each bottle. Sometimes you'll have sugar stick to the spoon, or if you're using a funnel, to the funnel. Meaning that some bottles will have less sugar in, and then a couple of bottles later all that excess will get knocked off and go into the next one. And that one, or however many bottles, every now and again will be overprimed, whilst the rest are fine or underprimed. The same applies, you can just tweak the edge of the lid a little and let excess pressure out. But then you will end up with underprimed beer in some of them if they were fine to start with. And then normal beer in the ones that were overprimed. The easiest way to deal with this is to batch prime. So you run your beer off into a bottling bucket, which is just another fermenter. In that entire batch then, you add your priming sugar for the entire batch, make sure it is well mixed throughout the entire lot, and then bottle. That way each of the beers is evenly curbed. The other thing you can do is use carbonation drops. And whilst there's some little variation between each one, you're going to end up with more or less an equal amount in each bottle. And that will ensure an even level of carbonation across the entire batch. Next up is infection. Now, if you've been brewing long enough, no matter how careful you are, there are so many stages where there is some risk of infection. When we do a normal fermentation, there's sugars left in the wort that normal brewer's yeast can't ferment what we refer to as unfermentable sugars. They're not unfermentable, or not necessarily unfermentable, just unfermentable by normal brewing yeast. If you get a different strain of yeast in there that may be able to ferment some of these longer chain molecules or different types of sugar, then that can lead to the bottles keeping on getting overprimed effectively because that's what ends up happening it keeps fermenting down gas builds up pressure builds up whoosh of course with infection the only way to protect against it is to be extra careful with your processes your sanitation your brewing area your brewing equipment make sure there's nothing landing on it getting in it living in it that can cause this infection. The only real way to fix infections, depending on what's caused the infection, is to release excess pressure. But again, you want to be very careful doing that because it's going to be very unpredictable if it's um, some sort of uh, wild yeast or whatever that's infected it it could get very highly overcurbed, in which case it's going to be dangerous to handle them. You probably want to get rid of the batch. Or you could try venting excess pressure. That was easy for me to say. And, and then trying the beer. If the beer still tastes, uh, still smells okay, looks okay then you might give it a taste if it still tastes okay you haven't lost anything if it tastes bad ditch it there's one other potential cause which not everyone thinks of but that's damaged or weak bottles Sometimes in a batch of bottles, you will just get some that are weaker than others. Especially if you like reusing bottles or if you dumpster dive to get them in the first place. I know many brewers have said in the past that 
when they were short on bottles, they went and asked their local pub, grabbed a load out of the bottle bin, cleaned them up, whatever. Now, if you sat down in a lot of pubs, you'll hear just how well those bottles get treated. And you can hear the clashing and clanging as they're thrown in the bottle end bin from the other end of the bar when you're sat the other side of the pub. There could be tiny chips, cracks in them that you don't notice when you're cleaning it. No matter how careful you are, those bottles could have been weakened. I would seriously advise against using bottles like that. If you don't know the provenance of them and you don't know that they've been looked after, I personally don't think it's worth the risk of wasting your batch of beer, considering a pack of bottles is probably, a, at the worst case, probably under a quarter of the price of the batch that you're putting in them, depending how you brew and what bottles you get. If you've got weak bottles, there's no way of knowing until they go. No matter how careful you are at a bottle inspection, you might notice might not notice a small crack or a small chip in them that weaks, weakens them. If you get some stuck going and there's no other reason, that's probably why. Anyway, I'd love to hear your experiences, hear what's happened with you. I know a lot of brewers on the forums have had issues with gushers. We generally get a handful at every competition I've ever judged at. And it keeps us judges cheering throughout the day. If it's your beer, you may not be so happy about it. Anyway, that's how you can turn around and either... Remember to hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching Daft Cat Brewing.